to uh, brag, but literally exactly what I said last week literally happened. So, all right. So here's the thing. Oh, let's let, let's just talk about Cosmos for a second, because I, this is where I was wrong, kind of wrong. I was actually not totally wrong, but sort of. It's kind of interesting. So it's perfect. It's a perfect way to uh, measure my uh, ideas or or you know, basically, I'm using creativity to to establish a pattern. And, and then that creativity is sometimes dead on the money and I get the pattern exactly right or I get it wrong in some way in the difference between the reality and my creative actionable system teaches me a valuable lesson, right? You see what I'm saying? All right, all right. So check this out. Cosmos, right? What did I say last week? I said Cosmos would bounce off the 702 right here, our secret level between 618 and 786, would bounce off that, get crushed, at the same time that Bitcoin got crushed. Well, Bitcoin got crushed and Cosmos went higher than I thought it would. But look where it came comes well, look where it is right now. It's hanging out right at the 702. It busted through the 702, made it all the way to the one, right? Full, full stop, made it home. You know what I'm saying? And that's where it bounced off. It's very similar to what Curve did. And in both scenarios, I sold, including Cosmos, I sold Curve and Cosmos at that 702. Um Missed a little bit more upside, not a big deal. This is, you know, these are dynamic systems. You're using gratitude. I mean, this was great. So what's going on now? Now I got Curve and Cosmos money on the sidelines. And let's talk about this Fibonacci structure that I've got going here. This, how did I even think of this? This is totally arbitrary. I made this Fibonacci structure thinking that like this is a reasonable level to go down to. You know what I'm saying? 33, right? 33 is just, it's like 51% crash, right? About a 51 or something, 51.5% crash puts us right about 33. And we love our 33s. We know Bitcoins love 33. Like this is, so this is what I got. And look what happens when I bring this down to 33 and I see like different channels you know, I see this like, oh, look, Bitcoin hung out in this channel for a while, right? Is this going to be the actual channel that it was hanging in? You know, all things considered, right? If Bitcoin actually does go down to 33 and puts that low in right there, well, then look at that. Oh, look, you know what I mean? It's like reverse engineering the future using Fibonacci. So I'm I'm playing with Fibonacci guessing using all kinds of like weird random clues like, oh, 33, like, and look how 33 sort of fits in that whole thing, like put it in a new low, put it in a lower low here, but sort of like, you know, you think you're going to hold here, right? That's what people think right now. People are thinking they're going to hold here because look, you see that? It's, 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 it just, there's a nice little reason where people might think this, this level is going to hold. And look how that's on the Fibonacci, right? It's respecting the, the hell out of that level. But I think ultimately it's going to, it's going to make its way down here. Now, the big question, the big question is are we going to retrace upwards before we go down? And if we do, I think this is a reasonable thing to think. Something like this is, could be setting up. If Bitcoin finds support here, right, and, and basic prophecies are fulfilled, like we could measure this against the past, you know, in the 2017 retrace and see how this lines up with this. But check out this basic theory that could be like a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way where you find support here first, even though you're ultimately heading down, and you form something like this, right? You know what I'm saying? Before, see what I'm saying? Something like this, right? So, and ultimately, I'm heading up here, right? I'm heading up like something like that, right? And I just keep doing these. I just keep making new ones. I just, you know, that other one, that one served me for a while. Then it failed, so I switched it up. Look what's going on here, right? So we set up, uh, you know, we find support at this level. You know, come back, test up here because, you know, like we've got resistance there, probably wouldn't make it through, you know, just another little system for me to mess with. Um, so the question becomes, right, if you want to swing on these waves here, yeah, theoretically, this is a great little moment to buy if you're planning to sell into the strength up here, right? And if this system becomes fulfilled, I may very well sell uh, some positions up here because um, this is going to be a great spot to be taking profits to set up here, right? And now I'm predicting way too much you know, dynamicism to, to rely on, right? Like this is way too dynamic, but you know, these help me form different strategies that I can use and turn on a dime with. And cause I have so many of them cause I'm using so many of these basic theories. All right, kid. I guess if anything that I just said made any sense to you, you should probably post a comment. Honestly, like if that made sense, I feel like I was talking a million miles an hour 
and I was just like rattling, rambling, and I thought I thought I was making complete sense, but I want to see if anyone else thinks that. All right, so moving on here, let's zoom into this dynamic theory, thinking that um, Bitcoin may find support down here first and work its way up here. Well, it's really interesting, these setups we have, like UMA, I don't talk about UMA a whole lot on this channel, but I hold a bunch of UMA, and like, this is kind of an obvious, like, setup, something's going on with UMA right here, like, whoa, like, so here we go, right, so if Bitcoin is going to maybe hit up this level, you know, make its way up here, um, you know, that's going to make some of the altcoins pump, right? Like they're going to pump on that pump. That's just the way it works. Now your, your bets are as good as mine for which one of those, you know, will do that. But I've had my eye on UMA. So how do, how am I playing this new dynamic UMA swing trade theory that I've got going on? Well, there's, there's two, in, two essential ways I'm looking at this right now. I'll show you essential way one doing on this, this high 24 bucks high, uh, November 15th. Um, if this setup is going to abide by this rules, then I think it's very reasonable to see UMA do something like this, right? Like in a quick impulsive move, right? Like in a very quick impulsive move because it's done many aggressively compulsive moves before, right? Like that, you know, these are the kinds of setups I like. So this could be a short lived impulsive move that aligns. I put the top of that January 22nd where I put the top of this. Yeah. Yeah. See that? That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like this kind of stuff. This is how I'm setting this up. And obviously, literally, I could be so wrong, right? And I could be wrong about everything, right? I could, it could go up here, right? Like I think 702, I sell all of it and then it just rips, keeps ripping. That's obviously classic, right? That could happen. But uh, UMA could be setting up for just like a perfect basic prophecy fulfiller to this 702. So that's essential way uh, number one. I'll show you essential way number two, which is a little bit more optimistic. So it's like, how do you even like how do you even decide which theories are more valid you know what i don't know man like i don't really know how i do but i just need to have we all we all need to have a lot of theories we need to be open to a lot of possibilities so on this larger structure this 702 is also setting up Ooh, right we see all this stuff these retroactive prophecy fulfillings right you see this you see that You're like now we know this was the 702 but back then we didn't know that 33 was the 702 for UMA. We didn't we didn't know that at the time, you know, but but now we can see that's a level that's got some gravity like it could be tested again, could be very well respected. Also, look, very reasonably this channel. This channel has a ton of gravity to it. So if you want to be like mad conservative, right? Remember this 702 over here, like well, you know, we could consider that we might hit up this level, right? You know, just because look how much time it's spent in this channel, right? This is all I'm saying. And look how much this is. P puts me around 23 bucks on a pretty reasonable area of interest. That's more than double my money. And look at this. Look at this setup. You know what I mean? Like, all right, let's just see how this plays out with UMA here. I made it. I made a couple good predictions last week. Um, I, I'll, I'm making another one this week. Let's see UMA setting up to be really nice. Let's see what else we got. Literally everything, everything is it's like, uh, yeah, like same exact archetype. I can literally like GRT, same exact archetype. It's all this. Oh, we got first level 702, conservative 702. And then we've got, we've got big, less conservative 702. Like, oh, but it's the same setup as UMA, like respecting 702 previously. Oh, look at it. 220, dude. <laughs> God, dude.